just feel really nervous. I feel like a dork in here talking to a camera, but not that you don't know that I do that, but I still feel like a dork. <laughs> Fiber Junkies, welcome back to The Color Cauldron. I'm Johanna, the owner and dyer behind Potion Yarns and host of this podcast. It has been a while since I've done a video, so if you are new here, welcome. This is a great time to come back because I'm hoping to get back into doing these much more regularly. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for sticking with me, giving me some space to take a break, catch, catch my breath after our move, and get back into the swing of things. I have lots of cool things to show you, so let's get started. Whew, it has been a minute. I have been so inundated with getting the dye studio up and running, with getting moved into our house, with adjusting to life with an ever increasingly mobile and talkative toddler that I have really let the videos slide. In fact, I really thought about just making a farewell video and closing the channel completely, but I decided that I would just take a little break and then just get back to it as I was able to. And so I have a lot of things to show you today. First up, I wanted to give you a quick little sneak peek at my downstairs studio. If you are new here and you haven't been following along, my husband and I have lived in Kansas City, Missouri downtown for 10 years and we really, really loved it. It was great, but just a few months ago, we moved about an hour outside of the city to a small town called Ottawa in Kansas. And we found a beautiful historic home from the 1920s that has been really well cared for and we moved in and we're really excited to turn part of the basement into my dye studio. So for the first time in my business, I have a dedicated dye space out of my kitchen. I'm no longer bothering my family with dragging a bunch of stuff up from the basement, setting it up in the kitchen for a day or two and then dragging it all back down. We finally have a kitchen that is just for family use and a space for my yarns and dyes that can stay completely away, which is not only safer, but is also just so much less stress for me. So take a little look at what I have been doing. So here we've got update on the basement. As you can see, I've been busy doing this lovely flooring. This is like a patio floor that you can get at Ikea. Um, as you can see, I still have a stack of it down there to cut to fill in some of these holes over here but I've been laying it in this area. It's kind of like a raised floor, so that way if I get flooding underneath, it's not going to affect anything that's sitting on the floor, so all of this stuff can be dry. This stuff is stuff that is waiting to be organized. I've got my grid wall ready to go. I just still have to do some more sealant on the inside of these walls in order to get my um, storage area for inventory. So right now everything is in airtight totes and bags and sealed up, um, and I can't quite get it fully organized yet because I don't have all my um, shelving and grid wall and stuff up. And here's my die space. It's looking a little different than the last time you guys saw it probably, but it's still, it's a little disorganized at the moment because I still have flooring I need to get out of there. But I've got my other table set up um, and this is so great because now I can get a whole bunch of burners out here, but I also have some open table space for um, writing recipes, laying stuff out. Um, it's really good for like painting spinning fiber or painting hand-painted yarns um, And I'm gonna have more going on with that shelf once I get everything a little bit more unpacked and organized um, And then of course the steam table over here So I've got dies over there dies over here then I got dies back over this way So as you can see I'm still working it all out, but it's it's coming along. It's getting there so as you can see, there's still quite a bit of work to be done down there to get it into my fully finished, super organized, super cozy space that I'm dreaming about in my head, but it's really coming along. It's just taken several more steps than I'd originally thought would be needed to get that dye space um, secure from outside elements and um, safe and wired the way I need it to and not uh, too damp for storage and all of that stuff. But I've been really grateful that I have been able to keep dying and keep my business running while we're in process of renovating and uh, fixing everything up down there. But now let's talk about what I have finished lately. The first thing I wanted to show you guys was the Current Mood Shawl. And you will have to pardon my dangling little tail ends of some of my yarns. I like to weave in ends as I go whenever I can, but I wasn't able to do it on all of my ends for this shawl yet 
So um, this beauty is done and ready to be worn except for weaving in the end. So I still have that to do. But I really, really love how this shawl came out. So I am using three colors of my hand dyed yarns and you can find all of these colors in my shop. Uh, I do believe that uh, there's low stock of some of these colors right now. They've been very, very popular and when I first cast this on, I posted a bunch of pictures of the yarns just caked up together and I sold almost all of the, the colors that I had on hand of these. Um, and they're not currently offered as dyed to order, but they will be coming back to the shop very soon, definitely in time for fall knitting um, because these are stunning earth tone fall colors that are just beautiful. So the three colors that I'm using here this lightest color here is kind of a soft peachy background. It's like a beigey peach. It's absolutely beautiful with these soft rustic little speckles all over it. Um, it is a lightly speckled skein, which I really love because it makes the speckles that are there really, really pop and get attention, but it doesn't overwhelm um, more intricate stitch patterns. So this is a perfect speckle because you can use it on lace, cables, garter, stockinette, everything, and it's not too busy of a speckle. Um, so that you're able to use it for even really intricate colors and stitch work. Um, and it looks fabulous with the other two colors, as you can see. This darkest color I have here, this brown, is an old, old bestseller of mine called Entwifery, which is a reference to Tolkien's Entwives in Lord of the Rings. Um, and this is just a really stunning brown. It mixes kind of this purpley brown with a really neutral bark brown. I got the inspiration from looking at all the different shades of bark on different types of trees. Back when we lived in Kansas City, we were close to a park that had a lot of gorgeous trees in it, and I would go walking with my husband there all the time, and there was some beautiful variation in the browns of the barks, and I got really inspired by that and just started playing with a bunch of different colors of brown and came up with this tonal years ago, and I really, really love it because it goes back and forth between a real warm brown to a very, very neutral, almost ashy brown, and then has these pops of like a brown that's kind of glazed with purple almost. Oh, so pretty. And it's a really, really great neutral that mixes with other colors in my shop quite well. And then, of course, we have this spicy, spicy paprika -y red color. It's kind of a red-orange. And this is also one of my oldest colorways in the shop called Dragon's Breath. When I very first opened Potion Yarns in 2017, this was one of the first colors I had on my website, and it continues to be a bestseller to this day and one of my personal favorites. So I just really loved these three together, and I was inspired to pick these colors by Kristen at Volan Vine Yarns. Uh, she has a podcast on YouTube as well, and um, you can follow her on Instagram. She's an indie dyer. She does small batch yarns, so um, she sells out very quickly, so you have to like really get on it if you want some of her yarns. But she has a very unique color sense, and I really love a lot of the, the color combinations she comes up with for her personal knitting that she shows on her podcast. And so she's the person who I got the idea for this from because she was knitting this same pattern, the current mood shawl. And, uh, and I'll put a link to that shawl below. And I saw her working on it in process, and I just loved that she picked a medium, dark, and light color that had a lot of contrast. And they were similar, they weren't quite the same color family, but kind of similar colors to what I have here from her shop. And um, one of the colors reminded me so much of my Dragon's Breath color that that was kind of the starting point. And I had just created this new color called Cottage Core, which is the peach speckle here. And Cottage Core was brand new and I really wanted to knit a sample with it. So I put these three together and I love how it came out. If you are new to brioche, this is an excellent pattern to tackle because the only brioche stitches in here are just the basic, basic brioche. Um, so it's really quite simple. If you can knit purl and yarn over, you can knit brioche. And once you do it, you will be addicted, I promise, because it's very, very fun. It's really pretty easy, but it looks more complex. And it makes indie dyed yarn really, really pop. It is fantastic for super busy speckles or really, really busy variegated colors. But as you can see, it also looks very elegant and stunning in softer tonals as well. So I am thrilled with this. I love the kind of rectangular, it's almost more of a stole because it's really kind of a long rectangle. You can wear this so many different ways and I am really excited to pull this out for fall because I think it's gonna look excellent with some tall boots and jeans and a bunch of my really nice earth tone tops. So I'm very, very excited for it. Next up of my finished projects, it seems like I 
just got a whole bunch of things done all at once. And partly that was because I had several things I was working on for quite a while that I just finished recently. But also it's because I haven't filmed a video in forever. So you guys have been missing out on a lot of my finished objects. And now I get to brag about them all. This next top I am super proud of. This is the Catherine Pullover. And I found this pattern quite by accident. I was deep diving on Ravelry, like searching all kinds of things, using all kinds of weird filters, and basically just fantasy knitting for like hours one night after the baby went to bed. And I stumbled upon this gorgeous color work pattern. I was looking for stranded knitting patterns. And um, I really, really loved the simplicity of it and the fact that it only used two colors. And um, I really liked the two-tone effect. And I was also trying to use up stash yarn. So I had gone diving in my stash and came up with these two colors of a Cascade Heritage Sock, which I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's an old school favorite that's been around for forever. I'll put a link to it below. Um, this is a really fabulous yarn, and it's not terribly expensive. It's a commercially dyed and commercially produced yarn, so it is a little bit more affordable if you're used to indie yarn prices. It's a little bit more affordable, but it's still a really good quality. And I had a couple skeins of this kind of medium neutral gray, and then um, two skeins of this absolutely stunning, like mustard yellow color. And I just found them in my stash. I didn't buy them with any particular project in mind. They were, they've were they been sitting there for years. And I thought they looked so cute together, I decided I had to find a pattern that used the two together. And when I was um, looking on Ravelry, I came across this pullover and was like, oh, that's the perfect thing for them. And I was right, they're perfect together. So I love this pattern a lot and I definitely, definitely recommend it. Although I will say, if you follow it as written, it might be a little confusing and frustrating for you. Uh, I had some frustrations with it because I, I was really glad that I read all the notes and she did mention this in the pattern, um, but I also saw some people who had made it on Ravelry talking about how tight the sleeves are. It's meant to be a very fitted sleeve. So I did go up one size on the sleeves. So um, I can't remember what size I knit on the body, but I think I did like a small, there's extra small, extra, extra small, small, medium, whatever. I think I did a small size body, but I jumped up to the medium size sleeves. My computer has something to say um, because I did not want really, really tight sleeves, and I've had a bad experience in the past with um, my arms barely making it through a sweater that I spent hours and hours on, and I was very frustrated, and I didn't want to have to rip the entire thing out. So I just went ahead and jumped up, and I'm really glad I did because these are perfect, and they're not super like big or anything. I think that they're they're just slightly looser than fitted. So if you want more of a really loose sleeve, you might even go up two sizes because they are quite tight as written. The other thing I would say is I did not do a great job where this band is because you'll notice both the body and the sleeve are knit with one color just in stockinette and then you have this color work banding where uh, you gradually bring in the second color and then you switch to just one color at the base again. So common knitting problem. If you're knitting in stockinette with one color, your gauge is going to be significantly different than switching to stranded knitting with two colors. Those strands do not take up as much yarn as stitches. So stranded knitting tends to pull in and be a much tighter, less stretchy fabric than a stockinette. So you will want to either loosen up your knitting gauge just as you're knitting knit looser through these sections, or I would recommend going up a needle size. I did not do that on my sleeve. And I don't know if you can tell, I tried to block it out and it's it's okay, but this side that I did, this was the first sleeve, is definitely tighter than the second sleeve. Because I just, I knew that I had done it so tight over here, I was worried, so I just loosened up my gauge um, and just knit looser for those few rows of the pattern here and then, um, continued on and tried to block this out as much as I could. But if I were to make this pattern again, which I would consider because it was really fun, I would definitely go up a needle size just for that fair aisle banding on both the body and the sleeves, and then go back down to my regular needle size for the rest of the body that's in single color. But it does fit after I got it all blocked and I blocked out that tight sleeve, I was so worried. I tried it on and it fits perfectly. You really can't tell when it's on that one side is a little bit tighter through the elbow region than the other. 
and it looks fantastic. I love the colors, and it was a really fun pattern, so I do highly recommend it. I'll put a link to it below. I was not familiar with this designer at all, but I really enjoyed this Catherine pullover. Okay, the next two projects I have are really, really fun, and I'm so proud of them because after our move, well, during the move, I got really into getting rid of everything we didn't need. I whittled down the yarn stash and sold, plus donated some yarn I didn't want or need anymore. But I still had a sizable stash, and I had a bunch of leftovers and partial skeins from other projects that were so pretty. A lot of them are indie dyed yarn, either from my shop or other indie dyers. A lot of them were special, like souvenir yarn and things, so I didn't want to get rid of them, um, especially if there was still most of a skein left. But it's hard to use those up in projects because sometimes you don't know how much is left or you only have a little bit and it doesn't quite work with a lot of patterns. So I was looking for some things that would use up scrap yarn because I wanted to use my scraps, not just throw them away. And I, uh, but I, I wanted something that didn't look super scrappy. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know the look. We don't want something that just looks like um, clown barf or like like a blind grandma crocheted it, just reaching blindly into her bag and pulling out whatever is next, right? Like, I want it to look like there's some sort of order to it. I wanted it to look at least a little bit purposeful, um, but I did want to use up scraps and do something a little more creative and fun. So I found two shawl patterns that were perfect for this, and here's what I made. The first one is the Cozy Corner Shawl by Stephen West. I loved this pattern so much that I was like, maybe I should make a bigger, more rectangular version of this into like a gigantic blanket for my couch or my bed or something. This was so much fun. It was so easy, but so much fun to knit and it used up scraps in a really cool way. I will say this shawl as I did it is not exactly as it is written. So I did make some adjustments and um, I did have to dye some yarn specifically for this. So for my background yarn, as you can see it is a stripey shawl, but my background yarn is this gray. So the majority of it is this nice gray tonal that I dyed. This is a color you can get in my shop called Dorian. And it's a really, really fabulous neutral gray. It goes with everything, which is why I chose it for the background to show off all these tiny little stripes of really bright poppy colors that I had in my stash. And the way that the pattern is written, it's actually written for two colors that you stripe back and forth for super skinny little stripes. So every two rows you switch colors and you just go back and forth between the two colors is how it's written. However, there are some notes in the pattern that you can do the striping however you want. So you could uh, have more colors than that and still go in a sequential pattern every like two rows or three rows or whatever. Or you can do what I did and you can have a background color and then you can just stripe in for anywhere from two to four rows, uh, or sorry, two to six rows every so often in a random pattern. Or you can use a Fibonacci sequence. A lot of knitters like to do that to get a really nice design. If you're if you're less comfortable with the random stripes, you can use the Fibonacci sequence to plan out your your colors or um, anything you want. Really, you you can pretty much do it however you want. So you can follow the pattern. You just won't switch colors every time Stephen writes in to switch colors unless you want it to have that super stripy look. Go check out his pattern page, which I will put below to his website where you can view the pattern go look at it because he has two versions up there. He has the way it's written with the two colors, super tiny stripes, and just switching back and forth the whole way down. And then he's got one that was the inspiration behind mine. So it's like this, he has a bigger um, like background color and then lots of random tiny little stripes in lots of different colors. His uh, multi-stripe one was the, the inspiration for this and I just loved all the bright pops against the gray. So a lot of these are from my shop, like this yellow here is Icarus in my shop. Um, some of these colors, there's a day drinker one up here. Uh, so there's a lot of these are from my shop, but then there's a lot of other indie dyers and just like random partial skeins I had left. Some of these were teeny tiny little balls left too and I barely got two rows out of it, especially towards the end because it grows. Uh, and then other ones I had quite a bit of, like the Icarus yellow. I put that one in a lot because I loved how bright it was and I had quite a bit of it. This is a really unique shape too. It starts out this teeny tiny little point at the top 
and then you work your way down and you increase but you also he has all these really clever increases and decreases so you change direction and so it's not just like a, a gradual V it's like you you start and then you jut off this way and then you jut off this way and then you go here and it's very very cool and artsy um, highly worth the price of the pattern just for the interesting construction um, and then like I said you can Put in colors however you want. You could do really thick stripes. You could do color blocking where it's all one color at the top and then changes part way down and then changes to a third color. You could do so many things with this one pattern because it's all in garter stitch and it has super simple yarn over increases and then super simple decreases of like knit two together um, or a slip slip knit or whatever. So it creates this really fabulous look. And you guys, I did not even block this thing because it's garter stitch. If you keep your bind off loose like I did, um, you don't even have to block this baby when it's done. It'll just lay perfectly on its own. All I had to do was weave in my ends, which I did as I go, like Steven does. And I will put a link to his weave in your ends as you go. He calls it Weave in Steven and he has a little tutorial on YouTube. So I'll put a link to that below as well because it's very helpful. And then you've got this great, amazing big shawl. And because of this tiny little point and then the big end, you can wrap it around like so easily and it stays so much better. There's all these fun, cozy ways you can wear it. I'm obsessed with this. And I love the colors so much. Like I said, I kind of want to make an entire afghan out of it because it's really, really fabulous. So I did mention that there were two scrappy shawls. What's the other one? Hmm, the other one is a really cool wedge shawl using short rows. This is the Seedlings Greetings. I think I'm saying that correct. I will put a link to this below. This was actually designed to use up mini skeins in an advent calendar several years ago that an indie dyer did. Um, and this is the resulting shawl. So this was a pattern that came with her advent calendar, I think, a long time ago. Um, I don't know the designer or dyer or any of the people involved with the original pattern. I just stumbled upon it um, randomly a couple years ago, I think, and I bought it because I thought it was really cute and was like, oh, that'll make a nice little like mini skein shawl or I could do it with, um, you know, I was, I was, I think I was originally planning to do like every other wedge was one color and then put in mini skeins in between or something like that. I don't know. I don't know why I bought it. Half the time I buy patterns with no idea what I'm doing or some vague random idea that I never end up doing. This was one of those. I don't know what I was going to do with it, but this is what I decided to do with it. And I love it. So all of these wedges are knit using random scraps that I had in my partial skein leftovers box. So every time I make a project, if there is more than like a teeny little tail of yarn, even if it's a fairly small ball like wound up by hand, if it's like that big, I'll still keep it because I can use it for tiny little things or just, um, you know, embroidery or whatever. So I usually keep quite a few scraps, but they accumulate over time and then they drown you and then you feel guilty looking at all this yarn that's sitting there and not being used. So I get so much satisfaction out of knitting things with scraps. It feels like double accomplishment because I not only knit something really awesome and beautiful, but I also knit something awesome and beautiful recycling yarn that would have gotten thrown away or donated anyways, right? It's kind of like getting double use for your yarn purchase. So I love doing that. And this was such a fabulous pattern. I had so much fun with it and it's so, so easy. This makes great TV knitting, car knitting. If you're one of those people who can knit garter stitch at least and read a book like I like to do, you can read a book while you do it. You just have to keep track of your short rows. Um, and if you are new to short rows, this is a great introduction. It's just a simple wrap and turn, but you don't even have to pick up the wraps because it's in garter stitch. So this is a really, really great beginner friendly project. And then at the top, you just have one spot where you pick up some stitches and it's really easy because you slip the end. So they're like really easy to see where to pick up the stitches. And then you basically just knit and do a few decreases and voila, you're done. Notice it's garter stitch again, so no blocking. I am not a fan of blocking unless I absolutely have to, and you don't have to with this one. I chose to work in kind of a, a color palette range that went from yellow through purple. So I did, um, I started with this kind of pinky orange coral color down here, and then I moved into these deep oranges. Then I moved into a little bit of red, which quickly turned into a burgundy and purple. And then I moved it into really, really purple. 
I had a little bit of like a warm brown here before moving back into pinks. Then over here, as we end the pinks, I did this super variegated uh, jewel tone that moved it back into the purples. Then I have this lovely uh, purple and orange combo from my shop called Shangri-La that moved it from purple to orange. And then we move from orange to yellows. And then I just, I love yellow and pink together. So the last three wedges I added were pink and red because I really like how those look next to the yellow. So that way I was keeping it all in very warm tones. And that's a really great tip if you are doing scrappy projects and you have all these different scraps. I started by organizing all of my partial skeins and scraps and putting them in different bags. So I had all my blues in one spot, all my greens in another spot, all my blacks, all of my pinks, all my oranges. And by doing it that way, I could see what I had and I could choose certain family colors um, or color families that would go well together. So I wanted to, I really love what's called analogous colors where they're next to each other on the color wheel. I love that look. It's a super, super simple. It's one of the easiest ways to match up colors and get a harmonious project. So I decided to do that because I wanted something super easy that I don't have to think about, that I know will look good while I'm knitting and watching TV. And so this is what I chose. I just grabbed my orange, red, purple, and yellow, and pink bags, threw them all in a box, and I just reach in, grab stuff, and be like, mm, yeah, this will look good. I did not plan out my colors in advance other than that. I just grabbed the color families, and then I grabbed a color that I like to start with and was like, I'll start with this one. And then when I got done, I thought, hmm, you know what? I think this one would look good next to it, so I'll go with that one. You can, of course, plot them all out so you know which wedge is going to be which color beforehand. Uh, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that much thinking. This was supposed to be a fun, easy project, so I kept it as simple as I could, and I love it. Because of the big wedge shape, it makes a really, really fabulous shawl. It's super cozy. It's super easy to just throw around your shoulders. You can wear it a lot of different ways, but I like to just wear it as like a little cozy cover-up around my house. Now on to a couple things that I am working on currently. To be totally honest, I have a lot more things that I'm working on than the stuff I'm going to show you because as we all know, if you've been around the podcast for a while, you know that monogamy is something that I only believe in in marriage and not in my knitting. I cannot stick to one project. I really, really can't. And you know what? I think that's okay because I'm definitely an intuitive crafter where I have to go off of my mood, but it also has to do with practicalities. When I'm watching TV and knitting, there's a certain sort of thing I'm going to work on that's very different than when I'm listening to an audiobook or a podcast and knitting. There's something that's very different that I'm gonna grab when I'm just gonna go in the car and I need something small and portable or go over to my family's and just sit around talking while the babies play on the floor. I'm gonna take something really small and simple that I don't have to take a pattern along. So I have a lot of different projects for different scenarios and moods. So I'm not gonna show you everything that I have on the needles. I do have a few projects that are in timeout as well that I have been working on for some time, but I've set them aside for one reason or another. I will get to them eventually, but for right now I have a couple new things, especially smaller projects that I can't wait to show you. The first thing is a hat. I love, love, love knitting hats. They are so fun. They take very little yarn. They don't take a ton of time, and I am a hat person, so I love to wear hats. I love to wear hats. I love to give hats away, so I'm always knitting hats. And I am currently working on what is known as an ass hat. These are specific patterns that are uh, the, a specific pattern that was written to go with a specific type of yarn that is dyed by my friend Samantha over at Whimsical Wood Yarn Company. I will put a link to her shop below. I've plugged her on the podcast before because I love her yarns. Um, I love to knit with them personally because she's a very talented dyer. I also love to knit with them because she's my friend and she's a fabulous and very sweet person. And she's been a great mentor to me both as a mom and as a dyer. So please go check her out. Show, show her some love. She has a ton of fabulous things on her website. And not everything she dyes is in this style, but she has a whole line of yarn that um, she calls her ass yarn. Um, things like, you know, sassy ass and... Um, I think this one is called Up That Ass or something. I, I forget what it's called. But basically, she dyes these yarns in a very specific way so that they will intentionally pool, which is where, um, if you're not familiar with that term, it's where you are knitting back and forth or in the round and you get these blocks of color where the color stacks up and it creates these blotches or shapes. That's called pooling. 
A lot of times people do not want their India yarn to pool and there's a whole bunch of different techniques out there that will give you suggestions on how to avoid pooling when you don't want it. And I can tell you from experience, there are certain patterns like a sweater where you don't want a big splotch of pooling right under your armpit or across your boobs. So you don't always want pooling. But there are a lot of designs out there like this hat pattern, for instance, that are written specifically to take advantage of large splotches of color in the yarn like that and stacks them up purposefully so they'll create these really cool organic shapes um, that, as you can see from my hat, look really, really awesome. I love the way these yarns knit up and it's so fun because this pattern is basically just ribbing at the bottom and then a bunch of stockinette and then you'll do some decreases for the crown. So it could not be more beginner friendly and easy but it's so fun to knit because the yarn colors are so beautiful and cool that you'll just have a lot of fun watching it knit up. Now I will say this is, uh, it does take a little bit more work in, than it looks just from what you see on the needles because while it is stockinette in the round, so just knit every stitch, every row, you are gonna have to keep track of where your colors are. And when I say keep track, just watch it. As you're, as you're knitting, you will have to tighten up or loosen up your knitting from time to time in order to help those colors stack more. But the cool thing about that is you can shift the colors if it's starting to slip off to one side, you can shift your colors back to the middle or over to the other side, um, or you can go back and forth if you wanna see really, really big swings from the colors. Um, and she explains all of this in the pattern. So I will put a link to her pattern and her yarn shop below. You will want to specifically look for her ass collection of yarn. Um, it sounds weird saying that, but that is what it's called, and they're all like, um, they're all like silly, clever, irreverent little names. And uh, she's got tons of colors. Sometimes she has a bunch on the website. Other times they're a pre-order, and you have to wait a little bit. But they are definitely worth the wait because they are really, really beautiful. So that's what I'm working on right now. This is a fingering weight version, and if you have her pattern, I am using a size two needles because my gauge. I have to use a size two and knit fairly loosely for myself in order to get the colors to stack up. But uh, this is a very, a pattern that's very much based on your own individual gauge. So some people will use a size three, some might need to go down to a one, et cetera, et cetera. I have knit one of her hats before using this pattern and it was so much fun that this is my second one. Um, and the first one I did, I made the crown way too shallow and I didn't like how it came out for me. So I'm probably gonna give it away and I'm, um, it's actually the same color, and one skein of fingering for me will make two hats easily, even if they're pretty slouchy. So I'm making a much slouchier version. I'm going to make this one a lot taller before I cast off so that it's a real slouchy long hat for me, and I'm very excited. So I've only done the fingering versions before, but I already caked up a DK weight yarn from her shop. This is from her Alice in Wonderland collection, and it's called Drink Me, and it's got this really dark, like, burgundy wine color, and then everything else are these real soft candy pastels of pink and like a kind of aqua blue and white. And I think this is going to be beautiful. And since it's a DK, it will go a lot faster than the fingering weight as well um, and be a really great slouchy hat. And because I just love Samantha's yarn so much and I love how easy and satisfying this project is, I'm also in process of working on a bulky hat in her yarns. Um, this one I'm actually trying to decide if I'm going to keep it as is or if I'm going to rip it out and give it another shot. I don't like how the colors are stacking up, so I've this one's been in timeout for a few weeks now, and I think I, I, I don't think I like it. I think I'm going to have to figure out what I need to do. I think I need to go up a needle size to bigger needles because the colors, as you can see, they're not stacking very well. They're kind of spiraling around the hat. And while some people might like that, I really prefer the way my fingering hat looks where it's kind of stacked up and it's got this kind of center column and then all the colors on the edges bleed in and out and create this kind of wavy line. That's how I want this hat to look and it is not looking like that. So I think I'm gonna have to go up a needle size. But the great news is this is a super bulky yarn and um, it's from Samantha Shop as well. This one's called Galactic Ass and it's, um, it's a super bulky. So these are size 10 and a half needles, and I don't think they're big enough. I think I need to go up to an 11. Uh, I might even try swatching with a 12, but since it's a hat, I don't really swatch. I'll probably just rip this and try the, the 11 and see how it does. I just don't want it to keep spiraling around the hat like that because I don't think that's as cute. But I will say I love the bulky. This knit up so quickly. This was only like 
probably three hours of knitting tops and that was like slow knitting like I took several snack breaks in there if I just straight up knit I could have probably gotten this whole amount done in an hour and a half to two hours um, and the bulky yarns I don't usually knit with and I love this so much and you only need one skein and I think I'm gonna be uh, barely making it to the end of my skein but I think you only need one skein and you can still make a pretty slouchy hat so I think I'm gonna rip that and try it on the size 11 needles now um, technically you only need one pattern for any of these yarn weights if you are willing to do a little bit of trial and error and figure it out for yourself but if like me when you get done watching baby running your business cleaning the house and all those other things at the end of the night you are not feeling like doing a bunch of math and thinking and having to kind of work out your designs yourself and you just want to turn off your brain and do some easy knitting if like me that is your story you will want to purchase her instant acidification pattern which is the bulky weight version of this hat so it's specifically designed for this bulky yarn this like super chunky yarn that she sells on her website and so it's basically the same outline of the hat she gives you a lot of the same instructions about how to shift the colors how to read your knitting as you go to make sure they stack appropriately but she does give you more information that's specific to the bulky she gives you like an approximate number to cast on based on your gauge and how to like adjust your gauge to fit it she gives you more specific needle sizes so I went ahead and bought both patterns personally because I didn't want to have to think about it and I'm not sure if this is true I'll check my pattern and see but I think if you purchase the instant acidification hat pattern it also comes with a cowl pattern so you can do a cowl version using two skeins of this bulky that goes around your neck um, I haven't made that because I only have the one skein of her super bulky but I love the the cowls that I've seen people do online oh my computer's singing to me and finally I have one more project to show you that I am really really enjoying and super excited about because it is so fun and that is my knitting shawl game this is something I just cast on last night and I had so much fun knitting it I really had to force myself to turn out the light and go to bed because I was having so much fun I purchased this kit two years ago <laughs> two years ago um, that could be worse I have some yarn sitting in stash that's way older than that I haven't cast on I saw someone in one of my online knitting groups had purchased it and she was knitting one and so I immediately jumped on even though I had a million projects on the needles and didn't need another one, I went ahead and treated myself to a kit. This is called the Unpredictable Shawl Knitting Game, and it is put out by a company called Biscotti Yarns. I will put a link to their website below. If they still have this available on the website, I'll put it up there. Um, if not, you should email them and say, please bring back the knitting shawl game. It's really, really fun because this is so cool. It's highly, highly worth the money in my opinion for a couple of reasons. First of all, the point of this is they put together these um, hand dyed yarns from their shop. So you get six 50 gram skeins of hand dyed yarns and the kits they have on their website, all of the yarns obviously go together well. They make a really nice kit and there's several color options so you can pick the ones that go the best for you. I chose this kit, I don't remember what it's called, but it has all these like kind of woodsy colors. It's brown, green, gold and kind of like this aubergine eggplanty burgundy color and then there's a couple little white background with all those colors as speckles on it and I love the really really rich kind of old world uh, feel. it feels like an Italian vineyard to me or something with these beautiful greens and, and this one's even called Kalamata like the olives um, this beautiful wine color I just love it so I chose this kit but there were a whole bunch of different color options there and then it comes with a pattern for the shawl and um, then it comes with uh, well a bunch of their little advertising cards you will need to supply your own needles but it has the yarn and the pattern and then it also comes with a pair of dice you get a black dice and a white die and uh, basically the concept is you label each of your six colors one through six so each one gets a number and then on the pattern it has a little introductory part so it tells you like cast on so many skeins and then knit these first few rows to just get it started and then it's got six different sections so they're all labeled one through six and the idea is you roll both of the die and throw them the white die is the number of the the yarn color that you're using so if I roll and I get a three I find 
my color that's number three that I assigned number three and that's the color I'll knit with for the next section. The black die tells you which section of the pattern you're doing. So if I get number five, that means I'm doing stitch pattern number five. And it'll tell you uh, at the end of those section, it'll say now switch to the next section or whatever. So you just knit through each section. They're easily divided on the pattern. And then uh, you roll the die again and get to go again. Some sections have two colors per section. So you will roll the white die twice to get the different colors. So here's what I have so far. As you can see, this is crazy, crazy fun. It's really, really fun if you don't cheat, although I will admit to cheating slightly and I'll tell you where that, uh, where that occurred. So I started, I just rolled the white die to start and I got number one for my very first roll, which was my brown color. So I started up here, did the introductory section, then I rolled the die again, I got two colors. So I started down here, then I moved down into here and I was doing really good at not cheating all the way through here even though in this section I had to do two different colors but I had the same pattern section and I was like, oh, I want to switch to a new stitch pattern. But I didn't. I stuck with it and I just did two sections of that. But I got down to this section here where you can see the, the gold color and this burgundy. And I hated this stitch pattern. It was no fun to knit. It was stressful. It wasn't hard. It was just boring. <laughs> so I was stressed out because I was bored and I had to slow down because I'm a kind of fast knitter and this section you're like knitting four stitches together pretty much all the way across the row and I hated it. I thought it, I don't even think it's that cute. I think a lot of the other stitch patterns are a lot nicer looking. This one to me is not even attractive looking and it was no fun to knit and I was bored, bored, bored. So I ended it a little bit early and just did some garter stitch stripes at that at the bottom of that section so my stitch count would be correct and then I rolled the die and I literally got the very same section that I was supposed to do again and I was like mm -mm, I'm not doing it I'm rebelling I'm declaring my independence from this pattern and I am going to create my own stitch pattern so I did my own stitch pattern here with these next two colors and I just added in a very simple easy little slip stitch stripe pattern so that's where I cheated and I'm going to be honest, I am never going to do that same stitch pattern again for the rest of the shawl. That's the only section it will be in because I don't like it. So when I throw the die and get that number again, I will just continue either doing this slip stitch pattern or I'll make up a new pattern each time. Um, I have a lot of pattern dictionaries that have really easy little patterns in them. Uh, so I will probably just grab one of my pattern stitch dictionaries and open to a random page and do that one instead. So my shawl may be all over the place. But what's fun about this is the random nature, throwing the die and getting to like just go with what it says. It's very, very random and fun. And because you purchased the kits already made up, all the colors you know are gonna look beautiful together. So you don't have to stress about whether the colors have enough contrast or whether they're gonna look good. They're very simple stitches. Most of the stitch patterns are garter stitch based. The ones that aren't are um, maybe a little bit of stockinette or something, but they're very, very easy and so they look good in the speckled yarns, they look good in the semi-solids, as etc. So that's the main reason it's well worth the money. It's so much fun. But um, also I feel like you get quite a bit of yarn. You get six 50 gram skeins, which is kind of like a half skein for what you're used to seeing in a lot of shops. Most shops, including mine, sell yarn in 100 gram skeins. Um, some shops do sell 50 gram skeins for like socks and things, or for little patterns like this. And uh, so it's, a good amount of yarn. If you run out of one color, you can just, you know, roll the dice again and use one of the other colors or add in something from Stash. So that's the other reason that this is a great buy because this pattern, once you are done with it, you can keep the die and the pattern and you can go stash diving like I did with my other scrappy shawl. Pick out a bunch of five or six different colors that you want to use and then play the game again and make another shawl with your scraps that you have. Just make sure all of your colors look really good together. Um, so that you're not having any ugly sections in your shawl where you put two colors together that don't really look great. You want all six of your colors to coordinate beautifully. But if you're worried about that, just do what I did on my other shawl and stick to the same color family. Do all yellow, orange, and red or something and it'll always look great. And finally, the last reason this is a great uh, value is the quality of their yarns is really good. I've never worked with yarns from this company before and I've been so, so happy with these yarns. They are fingering weight for this shawl pattern and they are so, so soft. 
a merino wool and nylon so there's no cashmere in it but this is some of the softest nylon sock yarn I think I've ever felt it's super super bouncy and squishy um, it's very very soft it's very very pretty and it's a smooth uh, I want to say three ply I think it's a three ply hard to tell it might be a four but it's a it's a smoother yarn it's not real nubbly or textured and it just feels so good in your hands when you're knitting with it it's buttery soft and their colors are stunning they have such good saturation their speckles are really crisp and cute and um, they're like busy enough to be fun and interesting but they're not too busy to overwhelm the more intricate stitches so I highly recommend this yarn company. I will probably be purchasing from them again in the future. So hopefully they still have this available on their website. Um, if not, hopefully they'll bring it back soon because it's very fun. But you can also create your own type of thing if you just get some dice and um, find some stitch patterns out of your stitch dictionaries. Find five or six colors that you want to put together. You can come up with the same idea. I just really liked that this one had colors already matched, so I know they'd look good, and it had a pattern that was specifically designed for it. I just loved the idea, and I'm so glad I treated myself to that because it's been a lot of fun, and I can't wait to get back to knitting with it. Whew, okay, we are finally done with this video. I feel like I've been talking a lot, but I'm so glad I finally got to show you what I've been working on. I've also been dyeing a ton of yarn. I've been working on, like I fessed up to earlier, I have more projects than that on the needles. Those are just the ones I'm currently mostly working on. So this is where I need your help. Leave me a comment below and let me know what types of videos you would like to see. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, I would like to invite you to join me on my Rumble channel. I am gonna be moving a lot of my content over to Rumble. I will still have videos here on YouTube for you to watch, but I would like to invite you to check us out on Rumble because we are probably going to add even more videos over there than you'll find here. Most of our content will still be available um, wherever I can get it out there, but I am going to start testing that and see how I like it. I've heard from a few other independent content creators that it's a little bit easier for small companies like me to upload and get things on Rumble and to get seen. So I'm going to give it a try and see how we do. So I'd like to invite you to check us out over there. You can set up a free account. It's really, really easy. And uh, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and then drop that comment below telling me what types of videos you'd like to see in the future. But it is now time to cast off. Love you.